is today a frog day b smog day c hog day or d vlog day i'll wait everyone got your answers in all right let's see if you got it correct and the answer is d vlog day ooh, ooh. Vlog day. this vlog day is going to be a little different i got to catch up with tons of work as you know i'm part of the miami police social media unit and in that unit i have to create content not only for youtube but also for instagram also for facebook and twitter so with that being said since i was in boston i didn't have time to film last week so i'm kind of behind on some projects that we have lined up so rather than choosing between doing the project and doing the vlog i said hey why not vlog about the stuff that i'm doing and maybe later on when i'm done with the project i'll jump into a patrol car and we'll go out on patrol all right just got to the station so check it out guys Alright guys, so you just saw that plane go by and what that plane is, is basically a plane filled with a whole bunch of off or bug spray and he's dusting the area of Wynwood, you guys might have heard we had some cases of Zika, we're treating it very seriously um, as a police department even though there's mosquitoes flying around possibly with that virus of the Zika, we still have to patrol the area. Back in uh, what used to be the office, now it just looks like a storage closet in here. Tisha. What's going on? Yes, tell me. You know I just got back from Boston, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on in the office. Why is it in shambles? Well, we're getting new furniture next week. No, oh. the week after. Or is it the week after? You went shopping? Are you decorating this? I splurged a little. Oh, okay, good. So there you have it. We're getting new furniture. Thanks to Tisha, she went out shopping, trying to surprise us, but <laughs> what happened to the truck? The delivery was supposed to be last week, right? But what happened to the truck? The truck was stolen with our furniture, and when the truck was found, the furniture was gone. Furniture was gone. So, if you're sitting at my desk at home, we'll find you. All right, so we're gonna get out of the work closet, like I like to call it now, and we're gonna go head out and start the day. It's gonna be a long one. Tisha, you ready? Yes, I am. All right, heading out. Caesar, adios amigo. Take care, bro. Take a look at that. Look at that. That's nice. Beautiful. We're behind the AAA arena. We're gonna be filming the fourth installment of Social Media 101. What that is is basically safety tips for parents that allow their children to use social media. Just something to look out for because a lot of the parents don't understand uh, about the different social media platforms. So what we try to do is educate them a little bit on some of the dangers that are behind social media. All right, so we're gonna get started. We're behind the AAA arena. We're gonna get started filming now. Sarge is awaiting in the car. This is gonna be a little bit of behind the scenes of the Social Media 101 Instagram video. First location didn't work out because the lighting was too light, too bright, too hot. So we looked down the way and we saw the Perez Art Museum. It's closed right now, but we're talking to the head security to see if we can be allowed on the premise to shoot a video. Let's see what he says. Okay, so it's a go. Thanks again, appreciate it. No problem, anytime. All right, take it easy. Thank you so much to the people at the Perez Art Museum. If you guys haven't gone, awesome. Take a look at these. 
self-watering plants. But yes, if you guys haven't gone to the Perez Art Museum, make sure you go check it out. Apparently Wednesdays they're closed, so if you're coming on a Wednesday, don't. Uh, beautiful sights, beautiful scenery, and most importantly, beautiful art. So, if you guys are in the area of Miami, make sure this is one of your stops that you come to, Perez Art Museum. All right, thank you so much. and I'm taking over the vlog because Nick is back there working and I'm just waiting for my part. He doesn't know that I'm doing this. All right, I'm going to check on Nick and see what's going on in the video. <laughs> guy just got done filming the informative part of the video and now I'm gonna start filming the creative part of the video and I'll show you guys what I mean by creative <laughs> Done filming the video. Sergeant T-shirt headed back to the car. I'm gonna pack it up and then we'll see where we go from there. Back in the office, everybody's gone. But the vlog must continue. It's already almost 7 p.m. at night. I told you it's gonna be a long day. Uh, we're gonna go out now, we're gonna go vlog, see if I can jump in with one of the patrol officers, and then we'll continue the vlog. I gotta go get James. All right guys, so tonight, I got a special treat for you. We're going on patrol. We're at the South Station. We're gonna be going around the South District, going from call to call, and we're gonna be taking this special vehicle, which I'll explain to you what it is in just a little bit. I'm gonna leave the station, find a, uh, a good spot for you guys. So I can explain what this vehicle here is. guys so we're about to start patrolling as you saw and uh, this driver here decides to stop in the middle of the road put the car in reverse and uh, hit my vehicle but uh, just goes to show you that uh, being a police officer doesn't only involve uh, dangers such as bad guys but you drive around for 10 hours a day basically this is your office and anything can happen when you're driving around. And as you see, we just started and this happened. So it's minor damage. An officer from another area is gonna come and he's gonna do the report for us. And it's just like any other accident report. So as you see, sometimes things happen in your shift you're not planning on, just the way it is. And accidents happen. 
you know, we just got to do a report and then we can go on about our night. Um, but as you saw, it was minor damage. We'll be able to drive the car, all the lights work, the turn signals work. There was no damage, but just like cosmetic. But uh, still, in this case, we're gonna have to do a report. So, waiting for another officer to arrive. And once that officer arrives, we'll do the report. I cannot personally do a report if I'm involved in the accident. What's up? Hey, what unit are you? 7131. Welcome to my, uh, my vlog. Officer Nodar, I appreciate you helping me out with the report, man. Crime team's here, they're gonna take pictures of the accident, and you know, they're, they're gonna document the accident and the damage that was done. It's just protocol that we do, so in case later on, somebody says that, uh, hey, this, this dent was here as well, and no, we have everything documented. So not saying that's gonna happen, that's just why we do it, for precautionary purposes. Officer Nordar, um, I see you got the white gloves on. Will you be able to mime something for us, or? No, I can't. You, you're not, you can't mime it, even no, with the white gloves? I, uh, I don't got skills for that. Are you gonna be assisting us today? I will. All right. I'm detached with the crime scene now. All right. <laughs> so we try to help out as much as we can. We're a team out here. Right? Exactly, like everybody's do, a team. Look at all that hand sweat, you know what? Let me shake that hand, man. Let me shake that hand of yours. I appreciate all the, and let me shake your second because she's a little hey, camera. She she got a little. <laughs> all right guys, thank you so much. All right, I'm going back out there. Let's continue the vlog. Uh, I'm out here solo tonight, I'm by myself. So tonight I'm gonna be a little more with the GoPro, I'm gonna mount it to my chest. I'm gonna throw my vest on, cause I'm gonna be doing some proactive stuff and responding to calls, backing up officers, and just give you guys kind of a, a first person view of how it's gonna be. And just so understand that I'm by myself, so I'm out here holding the camera and I gotta be conscious about my officer safety. So I'll be mounted up with the GoPro. Some of the time and then to debrief, I'll come back, I'll grab the camera and I'll talk to you guys. So, first things first, now that we got this little accident out of the way, I wanna tell you about this vehicle. This is the Ford Explorer. This vehicle is special though to the fleet because this is the LPR. And what that stands for is license plate reader. And that's uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Up here on the top, you have cameras mounted with some infrared um, to read the night vision. Some cameras mounted and other cameras on that side. And other cameras on the other side, as you can see. So pretty much all the cameras as you're driving run different cars or different license plates that you drive past and that the license plate reader picks up. As you can see in this one here, it shows a license plate that are red. It gives a tag number, it gives the information, and it gives if it has any hits on it. Whether the vehicle is stolen, if the registered owner of the vehicle's license is suspended, if the tag is stolen, or other things like that. So this tool is important, obviously, because you can drive around and run multiple tags very quickly without even moving your hands. It's also good for officer safety issues where you don't have to physically punch in the tag numbers of the vehicles that you're looking for. Um, that ate up a lot of my time. It was when we got on shift is about 9.30 when that happened and now it's already almost 12. But again, that's the nature of police work. You might be tied up on one call for your whole entire shift, but you know, that's how it goes. It's not all action, guys.
a.m. I'm gonna give you a little example of what it's like to be in the car when the license plate reader is picking up tags. We're gonna go down this street, as you can see, really nobody out here. It's 2 a.m. in the morning, everyone's inside sleeping. So, I'm gonna drive slow so you guys can uh, hear and see what's going on. As you saw there, we drove down the street and we ran about 20 cars within 30 seconds. So uh, it's pretty impressive. This is a very useful tool as a police officer to have where you can just run multiple tags. And then, as you heard, uh, when there was a hit, it made a different noise and let you know what was going on, that there was a hit. And then it actually lets you know which camera it is that, it, that the vehicle is hitting on. So it's a front right camera so you know to direct your attention to any vehicles that are in the front right area. So, definitely an awesome tool to have as a police officer. Call. Um, the complainant was being followed by a black male who was wearing a red shirt, khaki pants, has short hair, is about 40 years old. That's the bolo. Basically, the guy uh, started following him, asked to use his phone. The guy said, I don't have a phone. Um, again, he said, Can I use your phone? He said, No, I don't have a phone because I know you have a phone. And then that's when the complainant ran over to the Seneca gas station because he believed that uh, something was going to happen. So, for now, uh, we're gonna drive around, look and see if we find that other individual, and maybe talk to him and see what was going on. Um, you know, that's all we got for now, so it's not too much. But uh, we'll stay in the area. The complainant said that he was gonna catch the bus, so he right now walked over to across the street to catch the bus, and uh, we're gonna hang around the area, see if that the other party's in the area. Started the day early and ending it at four o'clock in the morning. We're gonna end the vlog with the interview and interrogation sections where you guys ask questions and I give you some answers. So let's start off with the first one. This one's from our friend at Teroff13. Again, that's era at Teroff13. And it's a pretty interesting question. Check it out. Hey Nick, my first question would be have you ever met a person in law enforcement with non-American accent? like Russian, Spanish, German, or Eastern European. Thanks for the answer. The beautiful thing about living in the city of Miami and working in the city of Miami, it's filled with beautiful people from different countries, and that even includes the police department. Our police department is a multicultural police department. There's nationalities from Jamaica, from Haiti, from Latin America, Brazil, and some of our police officers have an accent. Now that there's no restrictions on you having an accent and being a police officer, as long as you can speak the English language, read and write the English language, and understand the English language, then you can be a police officer. Good question, my friend. All right, this next question is from our friend, OB underscore LD. Let's see what he has to say. Hey Nick, greetings from Europe, love the vlogs. So here's my question. Uh, lately I've been thinking a lot about becoming a police officer, but I can't help myself feel a bit indecisive. I feel that I would regret this decision at some point in my life. So how would you as an active police officer suggest in dealing with these kind of matters? Thanks a lot. Okay, so let me first start off by saying that this job is not meant for everybody. Over the years that I've been a police officer, I've seen people come and go at their own leisure, 
That because they give police work a try and then they figure out, nah, this is not really for me. There's nothing wrong with that. Just like it's not appealing to some people to be a doctor or a scientist. To some people, it's not appealing to be a police officer. And they don't realize that until they get here and they actually see what the job entails. Now, some TV shows portray police work to be a little different than what it really is. I suggest you do a couple of ride-alongs, learn about your local police departments, um, maybe volunteer, and get yourself involved before you make that career decision. If you do make the decision, it's not a permanent thing. You could always change up your career. So my advice to you would be to gain as much knowledge about the profession as you can, and then you can make an educated decision based on your views and the way you feel about police work. So I hope that helped. So let's go to the next question. Hey Nick, how's it going? My name's Christian. Um, my main question is, I see a lot of officers are always training. Uh, is that normally on their off-duty times? And what are the normal shifts for a police officer on duty? I guess you could say their schedule time. Uh, thanks a lot. So our police department has a police college attached to the central headquarters. And in there, they run several training courses. Now our police department allows officers to attend those trainings and when they attend those trainings, they are considered to be on duty. Now, other units have specific training such as SWAT and they train a little more often because they have to stay up to date and stay up to speed and be sharp and be on point for when a situation occurs and they have to deploy at any given time of the day. So they are constantly training and working on their tactics. You have other trainings such as DUI training, uh, DRE training, which is drug recognition expert training. Um, I was just at the cafeteria today and I ran into some guys that are recertifying for DRE. So, so, so sometimes you go to training, you get a certificate and you have to maintain that certificate by going to a refresher course or just going to a recertification course and it's just to freshen you up and if there are any new laws in regards to what you're trained in or there are any new techniques that's when you get brushed up on so when we go to training it normally is on duty and as far as a police officer schedule well throughout the state of florida and throughout the nation different departments have different schedules our department goes on a 10-hour schedule so we do 10-hour shifts we work 40 hours a week so that's four days a week we work and the shifts range from morning shift afternoon shift and midnight shift good question about training and shifts training is key in police work you want to be a well-trained police officer all right keep sending those questions into our Instagram DM that's at MPD police again at MPD police video yourself asking a question make sure you say your name introduce yourself get a shout out on the vlog tonight we kind of got bogged down by um, the accident that happened early in the shift took up a lot of our time that's when a lot of the people are still up calling the police um, at nighttime it gets a little slow because people are, are sleeping there's less volumes of call so you can drive around and be a little more proactive but midweek if no one's out nobody's out not too much you can do but like I say if it's quiet that's actually a good thing I'm Nick with Miami PD. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You guys always, always, always be safe. And I'll see you next vlog.